Good morning. God's blessings and welcome to Emmanuel as we gather together for worship. A couple announcements as we begin our time together. Uh, we have new Bible studies that started up today. Uh, Pastor Colby is walking through the Gospel of Mark, so you can join him Sunday mornings uh, at 9.15 uh, as he walks through the Gospel of Mark. Uh, we also started up Discipleship 101. That's our new member class. Uh, if you or someone you know is interested in joining the Emmanuel family, we'd love to have you join us for that Bible study. Get to know other people who are joining Emmanuel at this time as well and walk through those foundational teachings of our our church. So again, new Bible studies starting up. Those will go through uh, the end of May. Uh, we also have a new banner on the side of our building, uh, which made uh, Hannah Kovac pretty excited that she didn't have to stand next to her face anymore. Uh, instead, it's Michelle Hepner, uh, who I, I was going to say, I don't see her. Oh, she's up there. That, that's why. She's hiding up there. So uh, she, she loves all the attention. So uh, Michelle is on the front of the bulletin, up there in the balcony and on the side of our building. Uh, again, Michelle was awarded uh, the Herb Cole Foundation Teacher Fellowship Award for Excellence. Uh, for, for some of you, uh, you know, those, those awards are, are, are great in and of themselves, but in the last less than three years, we've had five award winners on our staff, uh, Michelle being our latest one. What a wonderful blessing we have on our staff, but uh, be sure to congratulate Michelle uh, on that award as well. We also are announcing uh, an upcoming voters meeting on April 14th. That's next Sunday after our 1030 service, so about 1145. Uh, we uh, will either uh, ex uh, talk about extending a call for a new principal or we will give you an update on uh, that uh, process and what our plan is for next year. Uh, our call committee still has one more interview uh, and then we'll make that recommendation. So watch for information to come. Join us next Sunday as we uh, share what the plan is uh, and prepare what that plan is for next school year for our principal position. Uh, the following Sunday, we also have our regularly scheduled town hall meeting. Uh, that town hall meeting is going to spend a little time looking at the process if Emmanuel were to choose to go through a building process, how that would kind of go forward. Uh, and so we've already shared plans of what we hope to maybe do as a building. Uh, we're going to talk through uh, uh, how that process would work so that you know what to look for uh, and what to expect. My last announcement is uh, we have our school play that's coming up on April 26th. There are two chances that you can come to that. We have a 10 a.m. showing and a 6.30 p.m. showing. Uh, I do want to point out if you come at 10.30, that's during the school day, you will need to have your ID and Raptor in so that we can make sure that our building stays secure and we keep our students safe. So love to have you join us for that service. Well, in worship today, we have our 7th and 8th graders singing. Hi, guys. Kudos. Great job. Uh, we get to hear God's word, and we get to celebrate in worship of the one who died and rose again for us. So let's go ahead and begin by singing our opening song. to my soul There is a friend that won't let me go Dark is the stain that I cannot hide But I see your arms of love open wide I come just as I am I come just as I am Great Thank you. 
rise as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Everybody except 7th and 8th grade can sit down because we are now singing a song.
Our first reading is from the book of Acts, which recounts the formation and work of the early church. Here we see the commitment of those early members, as well as their focus on the sharing of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. This reading can be found on page 858 of your Pew Bible, from Acts chapter 4. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power the apostles were given their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold, and laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is found on page 959 of the Pew Bible. Here the Apostle John shares our common goal and fellowship to walk in the light of Jesus from 1 John. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also, so that you may, too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise in honor of Jesus at the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, that day being Easter, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold the sins from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. And put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other things in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. This time I'd invite the children to come forward for our children's message. Good 
morning, sweetie. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning, everybody. Come on over. How's everybody doing today? Everybody doing pretty good? Gideon, you doing good? All right. Well, help me remember, what, what did we celebrate just last Sunday? What, what did Pastor Colby say Easter was all about? What was it? Jesus rising from death to life, that death has been defeated, and we now are going to live forever and ever. Do you think that's kind of a big deal? That, that God would declare all of your sins were paid for on Good Friday, and the reason that you know that is because Jesus, well, he rose from the dead, that that tomb is still empty even a week later. That's really big stuff. In fact, the church, well, they used to meet on Saturday to honor the Sabbath. It is such big and important news. What day of the week do we usually worship on now? On Sunday, the first day of the week. And so in the Bible, if you grab that little sheet for you guys on our children's messages, in the Bible we see the church meeting not on Saturdays, but on Sundays. Because every time we gather together for worship, we get to celebrate that Jesus is alive. That your sins are forgiven and that we we are going to live forever in heaven. That's why we worship on Sunday. Now, does that mean we can only worship on Sunday? What do you think? Can you only go to church on Sunday? No, we can worship any day of the week because Jesus has given us victory over death and the grave. Jesus has forgiven our sins. We can worship him on Sunday, but we can worship him on every day of the week because he's worthy of our praise. Well, you guys remember how I like to end, right? Arms out real, real wide. Show me how much Jesus loves you. Ready? Let's pray. And then repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for forgiving our sins, rising from the grave, and giving us everlasting life. Help us tell the world that we worship you. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys can go back to your seats as we gather our offering and sing our next song. Yeah. 
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. On the table uh, as you entered was a uh, sermon outline if you'd like to follow along as today we hear those words of Jesus from John chapter 20, peace be with you. You know, I always look at this time of the year uh, uh, alongside uh, those great sports movies. Uh, you know, they, a group of ragtag misfits, uh, no hope, no future, and then something dramatic happens. Somebody appears, and everything is changed. They get new uniforms, and life ensues in a completely different way. So I figured what better way to start a sermon on that uh, than to talk about great sports movies. Now, I know we're all Lutheran. I, I want you to take a deep breath. Pastor's going to ask you to actually respond in the sermon. It'll be okay. You can still be Lutheran and talk during the sermon because pastor is asking the question, what are some of your favorite sports movies? Did you say Mighty Ducks? There you go, Mighty Ducks. Ragtag mis misfits, they get new coach, new uniforms, and they win the championship. It, it's great stuff. Field, want to have a catch? Oh. oh, yeah, 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 great movie, yeah. What's yours, Kim? What is it? Oh, Giannis, yeah. Yeah, Giannis is a great sports figure, right? And they follow him, and they even make shows about him because he's that great. Other great, yeah. The Sandlot. The you're killing me, Smalls. You're killing me, Smalls. Yeah, there's nothing better than, I mean, a bunch of uh, crazy kids come together and play some sports. Oh, it's a beautiful story. Yeah. Any, any, uh, yeah. A, a league of their own. Yeah. Uh, about women baseball players, because there's no crying in baseball, Jamie. Yeah, yeah. Great story. Joey. I see you waving up there. I thought I couldn't tell if you were just saying hi. Hey, you did a great job singing, guys. Yeah, go ahead, Joey. The water boy. <laughs> yes, yes, that, that, that's a good one. Yeah. Now, Joey, Joey, I have to ask, was that yours or was that the person sitting to your right? Oh, both of you. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, great, great story. Nothing like uh, 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 mama told me that I, I couldn't do that stuff. And then all of a sudden you can, yeah. All right, go ahead. The, big green. the say it again. The big, green. the big green, and yeah, yeah. Charlotte, still you. Go for it, Charlotte. Facing the giant. Facing the gi yeah, you should watch that in social thinking or something. That's like a really good movie, huh? Yeah. All right. Remember the Titans. Another great. You know, all of these movies are, are wonderful. They, they have that common theme of left to their own devices. They would be just a bunch of bad news bears. But then a new coach, a new figure appears, gives them a new uniform, and everything changes. Uh, I told my family last night after church, we watched a movie together as a family, and, and it was a sports movie, and, and I told them this really was in the sermon before we watched it. But no lie, a bunch of clueless ball players, new coach, gets them new uniforms, and all of a sudden they start winning. 
right? It's just the way these movies progress because that's exactly how we see things happen in life. In John chapter 20, you've got the disciples, a bunch of misfit fishermen, not the bad news bears, but fishermen who get new uniforms. Jesus appears and everything changes. Before they were destined for death and hell. But when Jesus appears, things dramatically change and life begins to go in a completely different direction. It doesn't head to death, but rather to life. All because Jesus appears. See, that's what happens. Those disciples left to their own devices after Jesus has risen from the grave, are gathered together, huddled up inside a room with the doors locked because they are afraid for fear of what the Jews will do if they speak the name of Jesus, if they declare the resurrection of what would happen to their lives. And so they lock the doors, huddle together around all of their fear. And then Jesus, Jesus appears inside that locked room, stands among their fears, and their fears begin to flee because that's what Jesus does. In the midst of fears, they begin scattering and fleeing because that's what Jesus does to fear. And he does it by speaking peace. Peace be with you. Jesus speaks to his disciples amid their fears and declares that those broken, shattered shards of their lives, the things that they can't control, the things that they don't understand, all of the things that they build up fear inside their lives, Jesus comes and he says, I can silence all those fears. I can calm your worries. And when Jesus appears, those fears begin to flee. Hey, Hannah, you either need to click on the presentation or forward it for me because the clicker's not. There we go. All right. Thank you. So fears begin to flee when Jesus appears. And, and notice what he does with the disciples. He begins to give them new uniforms. Their old uniforms would have been the things that they put on each and every day, whether it be their, their clothing for fishing or going back to their everyday lives. Jesus says, I'm going to give you a completely new uniform, making you a part of a, a different team. And so what does he do with the disciples? They're inside that locked room, hiding for fear of the Jews Jesus breathes upon them that they might be clothed with his peace. No longer controlled by the fears of what might happen if they talk about Jesus. No longer controlled by the fears of what they've heard, whether it happened or, or maybe didn't happen. They have now seen Jesus with their own eyes. They've been invited to see the holes where those nails were. To see the gash in his side. And yet when those fears flee because Jesus appears, it, it's not complete, is it? it? We'd love to think that it is as dramatic as it happens in the movies. But eight days later, where do we find those same disciples who have seen Jesus? We find them in a room with the doors locked. But this time Thomas is with them. Thomas, the one who's earned that moniker that we all actually deserve. We call him Doubting Thomas. Just as he met the disciples in the midst of their fears, Jesus comes in the midst of their doubts. Even in the midst of Thomas who says, I will never believe 
unless I put my finger in that hole in his hands or stretch my hand out in his side. I will never believe. And there with those doors locked and Thomas with them, Jesus appears again. And Jesus uses Thomas' words and invites him in the midst of his doubts to see Jesus there in the doubts. He says, stretch out your hand, put your finger here. Stretch out your hand and put it in my side. Don't be disbelieving, but believe. And Thomas proclaims, my Lord and my God. Because when Jesus appears, doubts are dispelled. Everything that we experience, the fears inside our own lives, Jesus comes and begins to, to appear that those fears might flee. And, and we'd love it to be immediate, to be fast and, and complete. But Jesus doesn't come into our lives just once. He comes again and again and again that those fears may flee. Jesus doesn't come amongst one doubt and say, Oh, well, I guess that one I'll, 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 I'll take care of for you. No, he comes in the midst of all our doubts uh, again and again and again. And he comes that those doubts may be dispelled because when Jesus appears things begin to change. And they change because he pours out his spirit upon them. That spirit that in the gospel of John he had begun to teach them long ago. Telling them that he would go and prepare a place for them in his father's house. That he would come back and take them to be with him. And they'd be able to recall all the promises that Jesus had spoken and told them about so that their fears would flee, that their doubts would be dispelled, that they would know with certainty that Jesus is who he says he is. See, the disciples, well, they experience fears just like you do. And Thomas, well, we feel like we're related to him because we too have doubts. And so today, today Jesus comes and he stands amongst us. And he tells us that he's placed his spirit inside you. That he has given you new uniforms to live each and every day of your life. See, that's exactly what happened right here at the baptismal font. As Peter proclaimed that you will receive the Holy Spirit and God himself clothes you anew with his own righteousness and he breathes upon you that you may know what peace is. Peace that comes from a God who can take the shattered shards of our sinful lives and put them back together and make them whole again. See, that's the peace that we have when Jesus appears to us. And he didn't just appear on Easter morning or just at that font. Instead, he appears to us every time we gather together in worship. Every time we open his word and read and mark and learn those sacred scriptures so that by the patience and endurance of God's holy word, we might see him appear in our lives day in and day out, that we might know that our fears will flee and our doubts will be dispelled because Jesus is here with us each and every day. And he promises never, never to leave us or forsake us. See, as the family of God, we still experience fears. Fears of can God actually love us, sinful as we are? Could God actually forgive that sin that I hold on to and beat myself up over? Could God actually rise from death to life? And promised that he would give me eternal life. Who would actually do that for a sinner 
a sinner like me. Oh, we still have fears. We still face doubts. That's why we're here today to see Jesus appear in his holy and powerful word. To clothe us anew with his peace. Because that's what he had promised to his disciples. And that's the reason that the Apostle John writes this gospel that we read today. See, Jesus has done many other things that are not recorded in this book. In fact, John says if, if all of his works were recorded, libraries would be full of all that Jesus has done. But these, these are written that you may have life and have life in his name. See, Jesus had promised that to his disciples back in John chapter 10, that he had come that they may have life and have it abundantly. And now we read and we mark and we hear these words of God so that our life might ensue, not destined as a bunch of misfit sinners, destined for death and hell, but instead because Jesus has appeared, resurrected in glory and power, that life might ensue for us who believe. No longer destined as those sinful misfits for death and hell, but destined for eternal life that has been won for you, has been secured for you by the payment made on Calvary's cross and confirmed in that glorious resurrection that Jesus is still alive and will come to take you and me and all who believe to our perfect eternal life that he has prepared for us in heaven. Well, see, Jesus has done many great things. But for us today, we see that Jesus appears in our lives, amongst our fears and our doubts, and sets us on a new path, clothed in his peace and able to live life that he has given to us. See, these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts in your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Well, we continue worship, declaring that name of Jesus, that faith that we hold. We do so today in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to rise as we join together in saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty. given everything by our God, we give back to him in the form of our offerings. Pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, your Son is the firstborn from the dead. 
In him we have been reborn into a new and living hope. Nurture us with the pure milk of your word that we may grow to maturity of faith and have everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As your people are united in the common life and love of our Savior, grant that we would share that life and love with those in need. Bless the ongoing work of all our missionaries, especially our partners in Uganda. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Build up the households of your people, that your holy children, begotten in baptism, may, may grow in your grace and share together in your forgiveness in life. Bless especially those whose lives in Christ began in the month of April through holy baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As your son's wounds brought gladness and peace to the troubled disciples, give your presence and comfort to the troubled in our midst, but especially Pam, Tom, Tom and Jean, Wayne and Randy, Mark, Carol, and Tom, Judy and David, Sid, Andrew, and Lorraine, John and Cheryl, and Chris and Marv. Comfort also those who weep, including the family and friends of Fred Adler, who was called home this past week. May they all be comforted with the blessed joy of Easter morning. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you, out of your indescribable grace, for the sake of your Son, you have given us your, go your holy gospel and instituted the blessed sacraments, that through them we may have comfort and forgiveness of sin. Grant us your Holy Spirit as we pray together the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
be full.